Go big or go home. That's what they say. That's what the people say. And I don't know if it's necessarily true when it comes to cigars, but we figured today might as well. It's the Diamond Crown Black Diamond. It is J.C. Newman at possibly their finest. It's eat, drink, smoke, where we eat the fine food, drink the fine bourbon, and smoke the fine cigars. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Now, I should be clear. This is the Diamond Crown Black Diamond Marquee. There are different Black Diamond cigars out there. This one is with the Connecticut Sun Grown wrapper that has this unbelievably cool molting of black on it. You, it's, it's this black, it's this brown. It looks like a really, really well-worn-in leather chair that you should be sitting in smoking a cigar like this. It's not overly oily when it comes to the wrapper, but it does have a bit of suede going on with it and really some pronounced uh, veining on this one uh, from uh, the leaf. Let's get into the size. This is five and a quarter by 56. What does it mean? It means it's five and one quarter inches long. Tee-hee. Always makes Fingers Malloy laugh. And the ring gauge is 56. So that is the diameter, how thick the cigar is around. Tee-hee. Now, to make it understandable, a 64 ring gauge would be a full one inch around. This is a Dominican binder and filler, that Connecticut sun-grown, which, all right, I'll admit, I don't have very, very often... I enjoy J.C. Newman. I got respect for J.C. Newman. I was just in the mood for something big, but not so much in size. Five and a quarter at the very limit of the size I do on the short side. It's, I, I'm usually six inches or more. Go ahead, fingers. Do it. <laughs> Again, with the laughter. We just lit this up. Give me a couple of thoughts right off the bat. Pepper, 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 pepper. For me, right off the bat, a little, a hint of wood, maybe a hint of chocolate, but man, the pepper is hitting me right off the bat. Uh, it is so funny to hear you talk about the, these these things, and to be, I am so the other way, and and it, it's it's very possible it's me. We can play What Did Tony Eat Today, <laughs> uh, which we forgot to play last week, and I apologize. We usually play America's Favorite Game, What Did Fingers Eat Today, and you will be amazed he's still alive. Uh, I'm getting nothing but that those, those sweet bits. I'm getting nothing but a touch of wood. I'm getting a little bit of that. that I think you're right about the chocolate, almost into a dark chocolate that's there. Uh, my, my soul for coffee, my soul, you know, I talked about this last week, my soul for rum. Maybe I'm changing. Maybe I'm becoming a different person. Maybe I've been cloned. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But the... The, the spice is not is not what's happening for me. There is a an, a, a sweet mis, mixing with this with this cedar wood that oh yeah uh, so far so good and now, now admittedly I'll take this is my second cigar of the day okay so that absolute and I had a just a power uh, cigar earlier I won't even say which because we haven't reviewed it yet and I want to bring it to the show to review it. That could be messing with me. Now, when you're reviewing a cigar, what did you eat? What did you drink? Write it down in your notebook. Spiral notebook. Boom, bop, bip. What did you eat? What did you drink? What was the weather that, that, that you're dealing with, right? That's a, a big part of the question as well, right? And then first third, second third, final third. You got to break it down into those categories. You just give me a look, Fingers Malloy. What's the matter? Well, you said, what did you eat? And I, I thought about what I ate today, and it would, it would sicken you. Should we play now? Or we, not we're going to play later. later. We're going to talk it's cigar. Fine. I think you need to touch yours up Is that what's a, a little bit here? more. But funny, you and I have the same thing happening. If we're taking a look at the foot of the cigar, half of it is that white ash that you're used to, and half of it is still dark. Half of it, it's, it's like a half moon that is still darker than the rest. And I don't know if that's how it was wrapped or, or, or something else going on there. Or maybe when we both lit it, we didn't give it enough of a touch up. Don't let that freak you out. You'll notice things. You'll be like, hey, it's a little uneven. Hey, it's, it's, I, I, I didn't give it enough of a light. Just add a little more heat to it. But don't try and puff your way into success here. Let the lighter do its job. Because very often when you're, when you're trying to keep the cigar going and, and, you're, and you're puffing, you'll build so much heat into the cigar. That's when you get that kind of ammonia right. kind, of, kind of flavor going on. And then you're ruining your cigar and you got to let it sit and get back to normal. And you see that a lot, and it's understandable. You get frustrated, and, and sometimes you get just you get really sick and tired of picking up that lighter. So you just start 
trying to draw more and more from the cigar, and that's when you get that that ammonia flavor. But you're really enjoying this. I'm telling you what, a lot of really pleasant smoke coming off of a this. A tremendous amount. I'm practicing my retrohale, bringing it out through the nose, because your nose, that's what a retrohale is. Your nose has so many nerve endings. You have Remember, your, your taste buds only do so much. What you smell, that's really where you get a lot of the flavors from. But I have to tell you, it's that wood and that chocolate that is just hitting beautifully. There is a thickness to this cigar that's working all too well. I, I, let me say for the record, not for the golf course. No. This is for the back deck and a bit of contemplation when you've got a solid 60 minutes. I would go so far as to say this is not a cigar with friends. Right off the bat, <laughs> you have to leave, Fingers Malloy. <laughs> this is not a cigar that you're having with other people. This is a cigar that you're taking in to experiencing it and, and giving yourself a moment of real relaxation. Are we going to start having a separate category for our cigars called the Leave Me Alone Cigar? Honestly, yes. <laughs> right? Somebody, somebody write that down. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. This uh, on, on the back deck, feet up, give me a little bit cooler temperature, right? Give me just a little breeze in the air. Maybe, maybe I'm wearing my members only windbreaker. Ooh. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's exactly how I feel about it. But flavor wise, this is just fantastic. Now, the question, Fingers Malloy, is is this in your humidor at $22.99? I'm not there yet. I'm I knew you wouldn't yet. be. I, and I, I know I kind of sound like a cheapskate a, a lot of times because, uh, you, listen, this is not an inexpensive <laughs> hobby. Right. It, it, it's not. Uh, I always like to stay under $15 a stick. Something really has to move me to go any higher than that. Uh, we're, we're barely into the first third. I may change my mind. I'm, I'm very happy with this so far. The pepper has subsided and more of that wood has come out uh, and, and the chocolate uh, I'm just going to have to wait, but I will be surprised if we get an hour and 15 minutes out of the stick the way we're going right now. Um, it depends on how strong it builds and goes and grows. And remember, we're talking in between how long a cigar lasts for us on the show. That's not how long a cigar will last for you. I will say this. I can guarantee you there is not a box of these in my humidor. I can guarantee you there are three of these in my humidor for the moment. And then when I use it up, I'll go get another three. That's how I'm, I'm categorizing the cigar right now. This is the Black Diamond, Diamond Crown, J.C. Newman. Please don't get me wrong. There's a lot to enjoy here, but I could see how this is for people of a certain type. This is not a for everybody cigar. And I would argue, and I, I would ask J.C. Newman this, are they okay with that? This isn't for everybody. Right. This is for... This is a very specific profile going on here, a specific size, a strength. This thing feels amazing in the hand. You're not giving this right? to a beginner, that's for sure. And it's a 56 ring gauge, and that's too big for what I normally do, but it's working. No, I'm not giving this to a beginner. I'm not giving this to a beginner at all. Check it out for yourself and tell me if I'm crazy. Let me know on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash eat, drink, smoke. Is this a solo cigar or is this for a cigar with friends? And I like cigars with friends, right? Uh, but this is... This is all right. The Black Diamond right here. This is Eat, Drink, Smoke. Follow the Eat, Drink, Smoke show on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. I am not into idol worship. I'm not into the idea of shrines or bowing down to any particular person. I mean, you do in your bedroom what you do. I'm not here to judge. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. Great to be with you. Tony Katz, America's favorite amateur drinker right there, Fingers Malloy. But Fingers, you found this story from the people over there at eatthis.com where they took their love for McDonald's and they turned it into a shrine. They built a shrine to McDonald's in their home because they had been, oh, the flea marketing. Have you ever done the marketing, Fingers Malloy? Gone to the flea market and said, hmm, that's a lovely bit of bric-a-brac. I have seen some of the most unusual characters and items at flea markets uh, you, you just have to wonder where some of these items come up, where people buy them. I, I was at a flea market in Florida, and uh, they had exercise machines from the 60s 
with the original box. And what one was like, uh, you put your feet in it and with a spring, and they had the woman in the '60s workout gear on the front of the box, and they wanted like fifteen dollars for it. And you looked at it, you're like, "What? Where did you get this? And how? How long have you had this on this table? Do you come back every week, I and put this on the table, and ask for fifteen dollars and never get it? Uh, so yes, I have done flea market. I enjoy it. Do you? Do you do that? Do you? Uh, I, no, no, no. I, I don't mind seeing some good bric-a-brac, right? I'm not anti-flea market, but it's not how I spend my day. But never have I said, hmm, this inspires me to take my whole house and turn it into a shrine to a clown. They <laughs> turned their home into a McDonald's shrine. And this, nothing but McDonald's. Everywhere you look and everywhere you turn. That's a fetish. Now, I don't mind. Everyone's got one, right? And some are fine and some are super creepy. Everyone's got their fetish. This one, to me, borders on super duper creepy. Well, I have seen this with other, like, some people get really into, like, Coca-Cola, and they have to have their whole basement, it's all Coca-Cola right. memorabilia, and, and or, you know, the, the guy that loves to uh, have his man cave, and it's got uh, all the old school gas station stuff, or old school beer stuff. One of those, I totally get. An old beer sign, I totally get. All of it? Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, notice you said man cave. If you tell me you've got five or six, maybe, oh, who knows, maybe you've got a dozen pieces of sports memorabilia up in, 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 your, in your man cave, okay, that's the decoration. You went with a motif. Your whole house? Yeah, I, I, I get it. My dad uh, in his billiard room has some of the- Stop. Your father has a billiard room? Yes. Colonel Mustard has never been in it, though. <laughs> uh, but he does have a billiard room, and he has some of the best old school beer signs, like Blatt's. And Falstaff, and Hams, and 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 Schlitz. And yeah, I, I knew one of the uh, two of the four, three now. <laughs> Stroh's, Hams, and Schlitz. I didn't know Blatz. Yeah, Blatz. Not Labatz. No, Blatz. Blatz. B L A T Z. Oh, I would have spelled it wrong too. I w- Bla- I believe I went to Hebrew school with the Blatzes. <laughs> I believe. I think I was at Seth's Bar Mitzvah. Not what a half Torah. Not a high dollar beer, Tony. Blatz. <laughs> Let me what? surprise you. <laughs> it's 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 just it's just strange. And I'm just not but I you, don't understand how people could do that. But you get the the guy that will have sports memorabilia downstairs or in, you know, wherever your billiard room or garage. Yeah. Look, I I for for a hot second had a sports memorabilia business with, with with somebody. I still have a bunch of stuff. What do you need? What do you need? I was living in Tampa Bay at the time. You need the Buccaneers? I got you covered. I, I mean, what? Okay, when did you live in the Tampa area? Uh, Super Bowl time. Okay, so that's cool. But right. before Super Bowl time, there wasn't a lot of uh, Leroy Selman, baby. <laughs> that's it. Yep, the king of the cream sickle. Rest his soul. Yeah. I, so I have a fair amount of Leroy Selman, first Buccaneers player into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, right. He was he was uh, pretty fantastic. But I, I I have only in in the basement like five or six pieces. I have a Lawrence Taylor signed helmet from the Giants. I have a Doug Williams signed Redskins Super Bowl helmet. Right? Nice. Where, you know, Super Bowl MVP, so I've got that on yeah. it. I have, uh, I have uh, a baseball bat from Ozzie Smith. Oh, that's cool. That's got to be one of the cooler things that, that I have in the, in the collection. And then there's some things that I don't have up. Like, I have a football signed by Marcus Allen. Oh, really? And I don't, I don't have it up. I, have, I, have, I had a couple. I actually gave one to a guy for his wedding. Chuck Knoll, Steelers. Field helmet signed. Wow. So I still have another one of those. And that's got to be worth right? some coin at this point. And I've shown this to my kids, and they're like, can we play video games? They they could not care at all or in any way. I know there are people like, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. My kids, they, they, it means nothing. But if it were signed by Markiplier. Who? It's a YouTuber that the kids are into. Or at least like PewDiePie were. or yeah, or, or like one that. of those is autographed by PewDiePie. I'm I'm getting better at, at who the YouTubers are, and these guys don't joke. They're 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 famous. What you think of Chuck Knoll, former coach of the Steelers, they think of these people. That's exactly that's exactly how they view it. I have mad respect for these people. I mean, they are entrepreneurs. Especially because you use terms like mad respect, right? Mad respect. Uh, I mean, they're entrepreneurs and. I mean, some of them make a ridiculous amount of money on YouTube. It's, oh, it's God, insane. Yeah. It's, it's way better than radio. 
<laughs> yeah. We are, we are, if we did this show solely on video, but in between, we did the TikTok dances. <laughs> like Charlie? If, if we, if, is it Charlie? Is that pronounce her name? I don't know. But the point is, oh, into the tens of dollars we would be. I can floss with the best of them. No, you can't. If there is, you don't do it here. It's radio. That's not it. I'm just doing it to make you laugh. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. You put. You have to put out a video of yourself flossing. He actually got up. He actually got up, guys, to 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 show how to floss. the 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 memorabilia thing is, is pretty incredible because the people who are into it. They're deeply, deeply into it. Tommy Smoker, who does the videos uh, for us on on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Eat Drink Smoke. He's into all of it, man. Uh, uh, football cards, baseball cards, and like he can go a mile deep too. Yeah, like, and he's got an unusual channel. He'll he'll get on there, and uh, he was throwing. He used to play baseball, and he could throw a knuckleball. He was showing people how to throw a knuckleball the other day. All right, is that was that right? Yeah, fun stuff. I cannot throw a knuckleball. I, I I've tried, but it didn't it didn't work out. <laughs> what I can do is grill myself a steak. If that steak is an Omaha steak, guys. If you haven't seen the video yet of Fingers Malloy reverse searing an Omaha, New York strip, you got to go check that out at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. And then you have to go to OmahaSteaks.com and use my name, Tony, T-O-N-Y. And the Get Out and Grill assortment is 59% off. 59% off the Get Out and Grill assortment, which is the Butcher's Cut New York strips, the boneless chicken breasts, the Omaha Steak Burgers, the Gourmet Jumbo Franks. You'll get the Omaha Steakhouse Fries, the Caramel Apple Tartlets, the Signature Seasoning, which is fantastic. By the way, you put it on, on the strips, right? Absolutely. It is very good. It, it really accompanies the ske- steak very well. And you will also get four New York Strip Burgers for free. Oh, and 59% off when you use my name, Tony, T-O-N-Y, right there in the search bar. Just type it in at omahasteaks.com. Company's been around since 1917. Really cool story about coming to America and starting a business. And we're talking about American beef and how they do it. It's fantastic. You're going to love what they do because it comes directly to your doorstep, right? It's in the dry ice. You throw everything in the freezer. And then when you need it, you pull it out. It's a frost. You're grilling everything you want right there at Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter keyword Tony right there. 59% 59% off the Get Out and Grill assortment with the four free New York Strip burgers. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword Tony. Eat, drink, smoke. It is your cigar, bourbon, foodie, radio extravaganza. I'm Tony Katz. That is America's favorite amateur drinker. Fingers Malloy, the Black Diamond, Diamond Crowned, five and a quarter by 56. Still not through the first third on this, Fingers Malloy. It's going to last a little longer. Then we may have thought this is actually a bigger pup than maybe I realized because at five and a quarter, there's just a lot happening. There is a big smoke going on here, and that chocolate, that wood, it's not spice for me. It just isn't there. No, the pepper, I've gotten used to it, so it's subsided for me. Um, I'm getting a little bit of canoeing, it's not burning quite. So, canoeing is when you it burns on one side a little unevenly and it burns down to a tip and it looks like a canoe so it's called canoeing but other than that no i'm, I'm really enjoying it. It, it more wood than chocolate for me but there is a hint of chocolate but i'm getting mostly wood off of the stick now things like that can happen canoeing can happen and and it can happen for a series of, of reasons sometimes a little bit of touch-up gets everything back the way we do things because we're talking and of course we've got production going on in, in between we sometimes have to leave the cigar longer than we want to get back to it. That's, that's always a shame, and sometimes it creates these other issues. So things that we experience doesn't necessarily mean you will, will experience it. But twenty two ninety nine uh, at the MSRP here, or at least that's where, how, how we got it. There's a couple of these in my humidor, that's for sure. I'm still convinced this is a, a, a solo a cigar. This is a big, intense, engage, relax how, take that moment to, to, to get a little hold of yourself uh, ki- kind of smoke. But I'm, I'm, I'm not regretting it. I don't regret the price tag in the slightest. For me, it's the exact opposite. I could see going to a place like Blend Bar Cigar and grabbing one of these and enjoying it with a, a bourbon uh, amongst friends. Um, and uh, I, I think I'm there. I don't know if I would go and get a few of these sticks for my humidor, but definitely for a cigar lounge, I could see coming in and, and grabbing one of these maybe for a special occasion. Well, that's just because you're terrible. Well, that's true. 
It's time for news of the week, Fingers Malloy. This just in, apparently, I'm terrible. <laughs> Breaking. Next story. <laughs> we agree. Next. So things are getting more back to normal, and it's really good to see people are getting out, they're shopping, they're traveling. And now the workforce is becoming more and more normalized. Apple has announced employees are going to return to the office three days a week beginning in September. September? Yes. Look, I guess my immediate reaction is why are we, why are we, why are we waiting? Why, 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 why wait? I have a theory. Okay. Okay. It's a tight job market right now, and I think so many people are going to fight going back to work. They're going to go to their employers and say, look, we have been getting the job done, staying at home. Why do we need to go back? Uh, So if they said, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, You need to be back at work in, in a week. There may be some people that are like, well, you know what? Maybe I'm going to explore my options elsewhere. But if you throw it out there, hey, listen. You have a couple of months yet before you need to come back into the office. Gives people a chance to uh, acclimate with the idea that, okay, we're going to, gosh, we got to go back to the office again. I. Ah, oh, God. I'm just thinking of the psychology of that. People need three months to get themselves back. All right, maybe they need 30 days. Maybe they can't. Um, Maybe they can't do it in in a, in, a, in a week's time, but uh, I'm three not saying months. I'm not saying they need it. I'm saying if you're looking at it from the employer's perspective, if they don't want to lose a lot of oh, their so employees, oh, so you think this is their maneuver to make their people feel better about coming back? Yes. Look how much we respect you. Look, how, all right, maybe, but I, I, that would be a question of Apple culture, and I don't, I just I I don't know, right? But right. Are, are, if other companies are doing that, maybe they understand something about how people have been living their lives over the past year and a half that could be i to me that's interesting well t- to me like i said i i wonder because i've talked to people you know they don't work at apple but they've been working at home for well over a year now i mean some people they were sent home what in april of last year and they've been at home this entire time and i've heard the conversations i'm not going back i'm not going back i'm going to my boss and i'm saying listen I've been doing the job, and I've been doing the job well at home. Why do you need me to come into the office? I've proven to you that I can, I can work from home. This is going to be a very interesting how the economy and, and the job market shifts. I think that what we're finding is there's two parts here. Number one is the idea of efficiency. People could say they've been doing the job, but how many people have called in sick during this month and a half or year and a half? And the answer is it's near zero, as I know it, and the reason is, why do you have to call in sick when you're home? Right. You're already home. So you bank all your sick days and, and everything else. So there is an efficiency question about, well, how much is actually getting done? Or how much more could uh, be done in that case? The, the, the second part to it is pressure from cities and states. You got to get people back downtown. The restaurants, the bars, the this, the that, the other. We need people parking again, and we need to give out tickets again, and, and, and all these things. There's huge dollars at play if people don't go back. So there's this idea of being good corporate citizens by telling people we need to get back to the office because the office supports so many other things. And there's something else, too, that we haven't brought up yet, but we have brought it up before. And this is a discussion that's more, uh, it's broader than Apple. You look at places like New York and Manhattan, and you have skyscrapers, office buildings that were filled with employees just a year and a half ago. And so many of them have been staying home. There has to be a lot of... <laughs> People who own these buildings who are very nervous about these companies either walking away. And like you said, if, if these companies feel like they have a responsibility to the community to bring back their employees to help the community, uh, there's going to be kind of a, a tug of war here between the employees who are saying, listen, I, I've proven I, I don't need to be in the office every day uh, versus a company who may feel loyalty to the community and to uh, you, you make sure that the 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 you know places like Manhattan bounce back. This is going to be very interesting how this but unfolds. But some of the Manhattan stuff, right? Some of the 
San Francisco stuff. First, there's the things that they've done to themselves. We're, we're not getting political. We're just discussing real issues. Bad policy leads to bad results. I, I think that's 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 true of anything. It's 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 coding, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. I think that that's true of, of so many things. But some of those people said we're not coming back. Like for example, I think it's Victoria's Secret that said we're no longer going to have our flagship. It was in Chicago or New York or something. I think it was in Manhattan, but right? I'm not positive. So so if that's the case, nothing matters. They just don't feel the need to do those kinds of things anymore and pay that rent. So some of these storefronts, some of these retail places, office places. They are indeed doomed. Now, other people will come in and build out and, and, and grow and, and, and do. I don't know if it is the responsibility of the good corporate citizen to pay somebody else for the rent when they don't necessarily need to rent out the space. I'm just saying that the pressure from mayors, from governors, from city councils has got to be great. You need to get your people back. We need to get the city thriving. By the way, my re-election campaign could really use another $1,000. <laughs> what do you say, pal, yeah. chum, buddy, friend, sport? I don't know. I don't know what other term. I, I, I've heard plenty of lobbyists use the word sport before when they're trying to you know, get their, get their uh, things through get, Congress. Get their deal stuff. done? Yeah, get their deal done. But it is interesting how this is all going to unfold and how the economy is going to change. The economy has changed. But just like we discussed last week with... with the, the box office for movies Memorial Day weekend was over 100 mil you could knock me over with a feather because in that situation all the infrastructure is already there not to have people go back to movies you've got everything you need on your 65 inch screen and people these days are like 65 inches what you couldn't afford a big screen <laughs> right. right it's crazy but so that blows my mind this I I think, I think we're in a wait and see. I really do think we're in a wait and see. I think there are people like myself who really enjoy the working at home thing. I think there are some people who are more than happy to get out. And some people will just, uh, well, they'll do what they're told. All right? This is where the paycheck is. So they will go and do uh, the, the, the thing. We'll find out. This right here, this is Eat, Drink, Smoke on Facebook. Eat, Drink, Smoke. Remember, you can find our reviews on cigars, bourbon, and food over at our website, EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. And in the end, no one will be named Karen. It's just unbelievable what we've done to that name. It is Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Be sure to go to EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. You'll get the reviews. You'll see the latest articles, the happenings in bourbon and in cigars and in food and in grilling. It's fantastic. EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. Of course, the name Karen has become synonymous with complaining, synonymous with uh, uh, being angry, synonymous with butting into your business. If somebody who, right, this started with a meme about somebody complaining about the manager. I, knew, I want to speak to your manager. That's a Karen, right? That's what it's called. Well, it has so permeated culture. These poor women. It used to be the third most popular baby name in America, and now it has just fallen apart. Nobody. In, in, in the year 2000, it was the 153rd most popular name. Year 2020, 831st. Nobody wants this. You want to know how unpopular it is? The 830th most popular girl name? Fingers. <laughs> That's how unpopular the name Karen is for babies in 2021. It is so funny. It is so funny what we have done. To people around us are laughing. It's just... It's so absolutely awful what we've done to these people. I feel so bad. I would love the data on the amount of women who've changed their name, <laughs> right? From Karen to Edwina. Like, like something totally old oh, school. Oh, they just go by K. I'm K now. I'm not Karen. I'm telling you. Every kiss <laughs> begins right here. By the way, K Jewelers would be a fine sponsor of the Eat, Drink, Smoke radio program. Right? No, I've seen it on Facebook. The memes that have been, you know, just thrown all over the place over the past three ye few years and it feels like one out of every four that i see a karen will chime in and say how do you think i feel about this oh it's just i i do i feel for them this is brutal but it's over yeah it's it culture won and they lost and that's all there is to it do you think there's a karen convention 
where they get together and they're like, okay, we got we to gotta somehow create a meme and get a new female name out there to be the new Karen so the, the pressure will be off us. Would you want to be the hotel manager at the Karen conference? <laughs> would, you, would you want that gig? The, you're, you're telling me the airport Hilton in Denver wouldn't want the, the Karen convention? I would pay the money to set that up. A Karen convention... <laughs> Would be out of control we funny. Have, we have to do this. We, the, I, we, we drink smoke. Spare time. <laughs> drink smoke presents the Karen convention at the airport Hilton. <laughs> Specifically, the Denver <laughs> airport Hilton. Oh, these, these poor women. These poor, I, I feel absolutely horrible uh, for them. Uh, we have been, of course, talking about Amazon and their Prime Day and how the Prime Day, it, it generates, it helps them generate for the quarter uh, between like 112 and $116 billion. And from what I'm told, that's good money. Yes. So now they have, as you get ready for Prime Day, when, when is uh, June 21st and 22nd? That's right. So you still got another week. Uh, here are the, this is when they like, I referred to it last week as this is when uh, Amazon has their garage sale. <laughs> and you're not, you don't need it, but oh, what a deal. So you pick one up. So they've announced what their big deals are. So here we go. They've got the Toshiba 32-inch Smart HDTV. It's usually 200 bucks. It will be $130. <laughs> it's $130 for a 32-inch Smart TV. HD. I still remember in 1993 going to Sears. This was my big purchase. I got a Sears charge card. And I went to Sears, and I bought a 32-inch tube TV. And I can't remember the brand name, and it was $800 right. in 1993. And to think now, in 2021, you can get a 32-inch smart TV for 130 bucks, and it's, it's a Toshiba. It's a, it's a well-known brand name. It's crazy. The Echo Dot is only $45, originally 60 No thank you. I don't want anything that's listening to me. Right? Ex- except for a, a radio audience, a podcast audience, and sometimes you, Fingers. No. <laughs> I do not want anything listening to me in my house. It's creepy. Oh, I, I have one. Do you? Yes. I'm never coming over. <laughs> that, oh, that's now the reason why I don't come over. It's right. because uh-huh. you have an Echo Dot. I like being able to turn to my Alexa and say, Alexa, play the Eat, Drink, Smoke podcast. Is that what you Look at you. Yeah. You may have turned me around. Like, if you have a Dot, that's the only thing to do with it. By the way, don't say that on the show because people could be, all of a sudden, people lost the show because right. their <laughs> Alexa uh, changed things. Then they get into just selling the Amazon stuff. Prime wardrobe. You can actually pay them and say, here are my measurements, and they'll send you clothes every single month. People do that. $15 off your first $100 plus Prime wardrobe order. I still don't know how people buy clothes on the internet. Yeah. It, 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 I, I, I've done it. When I already know that it's something that works for me. I don't think I've ever bought anything, you know, just, just straight. Off. Ooh, that, that, that looks good. A football jersey. I think that's about the only thing I bought. Well, you know, you're buying it in size mega. Right. And you, you should hope it's right. The Amazon Fire TV stick, that's $5 off. An Audible premium membership, 53% off your first four months. You see, this is where it's just, it, it's falling apart. Everything else is Amazon related. Uh, Amazon this, Amazon that. The certified refurbished Ring Video Doorbell Elite. Normally $300. You can get it for $130. Well, we need that just so you can see footage of things like a bear being on someone's wall and a teenager pushing it. That video is still... You, you saw the video, right? A bear is on a, uh, at home, is inside someone's home. It's on their wall outside in their backyard. And the dogs are there and the bear is swiping at the dogs. So a 17-year-old girl runs out and pushes the bear off the wall. It's It's insane. The, I, I'm, I, I'm going through the rest of these. It's like Amazon cables. It's a lightning cable. Coax cable? N- it's not coax. 25 no, usually 28 now $23. That's not a deal. That's why I called it the garage sale, man. That's why I called it the garage sale, because not, these aren't the things. The TV is a good hook em thing. Everything else is just Amazon saying, hey, remember, we can hawk our wares to you. Why don't you buy our wares? Don't you want to buy our wares? <laughs> Buy our wares. Do you buy food on the internet? Uh, uh, some. Some, like uh, certain like kind of snack bars. 
I'll buy that way uh, Stevie and the Raw we have in, 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 in my house. So we'll buy that in like the 800 count. Oh, and meat, of course. Right. What am I thinking? Right. No, no, no. No. You, you're asking the question about do you buy like groceries and yeah. things like that? I'm not talking about buying Omaha steaks and having it delivered something specific. Oh, of course I do that. But you're talking about like the everyday kind of thing. Like Cliff Bars. See, or- but Cliff Bars, see, Cliff Bars, I will. Apples? No. <laughs> There's, there's a huge difference between the Cliff Bar getting delivered to you and the apple that I wasn't able to check. Because if I'm having somebody else manhandle my apples. <laughs> Not the first time I've said that today, everybody. <laughs> um, and they missed the brown spot, right? They missed the little mushy thing. I Wait, what? Is it, is it something I said? Is it something? I, I'm having a rational conversation amongst adults. I don't, I don't see what your problem is. I don't have a problem. No? Are no, you sure? I, I'm positive. You know what your problem is? You're not getting a good night's sleep. You know what would help? <laughs> a my pillow. You get yourself a my pillow. No more neck pain. No more headaches. You don't feel like you need a nap, even though you slept throughout the night. It's been excellent for me. You got to try it for yourself. And with the 10 year warranty and the 60 day money back guarantee, why wouldn't you try it? You can get a queen size premium my pillow at mypillow.com. For only $29.98. $29.98. A king pillow, just $5 more. You can refresh the pillows of every room in your house. Go to mypillow.com. That's mypillow.com and click on the radio listener square. That's where you're going to enter the promo code Tony, T O N Y, mypillow.com. Enter the promo code Tony and you can take advantage of all the deep, deep discounts that are happening on the MyPillow products like the Giza Dream bed sheets, which are incredible, by the way, and the new My Slippers. So get the premium MyPillow today for only $29.98. $29.98 and you can get the king. For five dollars more, mypillow.com promo code Tony. So mypillow.com and use my promo code Tony. We're going to continue on this Diamond Crown Black Diamond. It's smoking slow, but oh, is it smoking good? And make sure you check out the website eatdrinksmokeshow.com. This right here, this is Eat Drink Smoke. People who create interesting things are the people that I like. People who try different things, those are the people that I like. And when it comes to bourbon, when it comes to whiskey in general, there are things to try. There is the tried and there is the true. There is the standard. Don't get me wrong. But when you can play a little bit with it, give it a go in a way that isn't about shtick, but rather about trying to do something special. Well, I love that. The question is, has Rabbit Hole done that? This is Eat, Drink, Smoke, where we eat the fine food, drink the fine bourbon, and smoke the fine cigars. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. And this right here is the Rabbit Hole, Cave Hill, four-grain bourbon. So Rabbit Hill, Rabbit Hole, I should say, is Rabbit Hole Distillery, rabbitholedistillery.com. They got a whole host of things. They do some rise. They have some bourbons done in, in sherry casks. They... They're trying some interesting stuff. Normally, I don't go that way. Again, not the shtick, Fingers Malloy. This is different. This is a mash bill of 70% corn, then 10% malted wheat, and we know that those weeded bourbons are absolutely crazy popular right now. 10% malted barley and 10% honey malted barley. That's an interesting way to go about things. 95 proof, age three years. Now, the reason you know the age is because when a bourbon is aged under four years, they have to tell you on the bottle, right? Now, bourbon can go in and can go out. Boom, it's bourbon. To be a straight bourbon, it's got to be over two years. Over four years is, I guess, maybe what some people would call the standard. You don't have to put an age on the bottle if it's over four years. Now, some people do because they want you to be impressed by it, and certainly more time in the barrel, more time with that oak, you're going to be all right. This is a unique play, Fingers. You noticed... Off the off the off the palate right there, man. That's a tremendous amount of sweet. That's a that you you can actually smell the corn going on in there. That that is a lot of, of sweet. A little bit of, there, there. There's a little bit of sugar. There's a little bit of the corn. Touch maybe of a cinnamon, right? To add a little bit of heat there. A little bit of apple. A little bit. That's interesting because because I, I I can see where you you maybe. Maybe. It's a nice, nice, uh, easygoing amber. Not necessarily the most viscous 
uh, uh, type of bourbon I've ever seen, although it is sticking to the Glencairn glass just a little bit. That's that interestingly shaped glass, really help you kind of get a feel for what is your drinking, get your nose right in there and, and, and make it work for you. Remember, take the time with the nose. You want to, to see everything that it has to offer, and the smell is a big part of it. Um, corn is what I'm getting a lot of. No, nope. I don't always. Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting the corn. I'm getting just a, a, a sweetness, apple, no marzipan. Again, you with the marzipan right there. It's fun. There's also, for me, it's a touch of ethanol, right? There's a touch of, of, of an alcohol uh, smell in there. So while you've got the sweet, you also have a little bit of punch, but it's 95 proof. It shouldn't, by definition, if you will, it shouldn't give that much of a hit. I'm really excited about this because we haven't really had anything like this. No, this is a really unique mash bill, right? The mash bill is, what did it take? What were all the grains that came together to make this happen? And honey malted barley, the barley in general, uh, you know, with the malted wheat, it's, it, is, it is unique. Now, when we do this, we do it neat. And then we decide whether to bring it to a cube, uh, either a chip or, or, or a big rock, whether we want to add a little bit of cool water in there. Water will change the complexion. Of your bourbon, by the way, it's water. That's, it's gonna, the proof is going to go down because it's going to dilute it, right? The only way thing you can do to a bourbon is add water to bring down the proof when it's coming out of out of the barrel, and so it's going to change how it tastes. But we always start it neat. Are you ready to go, fingers, Molly? I certainly am. Do I've it been, up. I've been ready for this all day. Has it been that kind of? Oh, day? Oh, it's been that kind of. All day. right, here you go. He takes his sip. He's he's bringing it down. He's going to do what's called the Kentucky Chew. It's how you move it around the mouth, get it into the palate, fully engage. He's he's he's. Wait, he's done. He's done. He's thinking. He's giving it some side eye. Wait, is that bad? This is interesting. Okay. I'm getting orange and mint. And there isn't much, a, a little bit of spice and a little bit of sting. No burn. Um, no mint. Yeah, a little bit of mint and a little bit of orange. Now, so when I sometimes talk about ethanol, right, that alcohol kind of smell, some people will say, no, no, that's more like a peppermint is what you're really smelling. You just think of it as ethanol but it's, uh, in that in that way, but it's, it's not what you're talking about, that alcohol kind of smell. Yeah, but it's definitely not rough going down. It's smooth. Very enjoyable. Okay, Tony's going in. He's doing the Memphis Munch. Ooh. First, that is a full coating of the tongue. There's absolutely no burn on the tongue. There is a heat. Uh, middle chest. That, that, oh, yeah, there, there's a definite heat. Middle chest right there, but there was no burn going down. Uh, orange is absolutely correct. That is citrusy right there. And there's also a good bit of oak that you can get from it. I don't get on the nose, but I get on, on the palate. That's an easy and a bit of vanilla right there. Yeah. Right there on that finish. That's an easy-going bourbon, rabbit hole. That's an easy-going bourbon. It's funny. There are a couple things happening. I wonder if some people might think of this as very singular note, right? Because now that it has, has, it's been sitting, what's on the tongue? Still getting a touch of that ethanol. But when it went down, you, so there was that solid flavor. And that orange, I think, is dead on, fingers. That's, that is absolutely there. That citrus... The finish has moved a couple times. It went from a vanilla to a bit of ethanol back to that orange is, getting, is what it's doing. I'm not getting the ethanol. Uh, That's just but, me then. Uh, yeah, but I'm definitely, there. that little spice on the tongue and the citrus to me uh, is what I'm getting. And you're right. Right at the end there, a little bit of vanilla kicks in, uh, which is something that I didn't get on the nose. And they also, as, as the people at Rabbit Hole Distillery discuss... Extreme small batch is how they call it. Never more than 15 barrels harvested. So you might not find rabbit hole everywhere. So the question is, will you spend the $60 a bottle to put it in your liquor cabinet? I don't think so, but I will. If I see this at my favorite cigar lounge, I would definitely order one. I'm with one. you, right? This, this is a really interesting flavor. Grab some friends. At, hey, what do you guys think of this? If you're somebody who is into testing bourbons and trying bourbons with friends, this is a great way to go about it because this will work for the full table. But that finish has moved on me now four times. Yeah. That's interesting. It, it didn't really show super viscous in the, in the glass, but without a doubt did on the tongue. It really did coat very well. Oh, this is, wor this is worth trying as... as in knowing the flavors that I like, 
it isn't in my liquor cabinet. In knowing things that I want to try, this is absolutely something you're trying. Especially something as unique as this, I think you definitely need to give it a try if you see it at your favorite bourbon bar. Uh, you know, that the vanilla note came late, and then that subsided, and I'm still getting that citrus on the palate. It's it's very interesting. It is, because it's playing, it's moving, it, 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 it's hitting different ways at different times. I just threw a cube on, not, not a big rock, just an ice chip, immediately. I want to see what a little bit of chill does, I want to see a little bit of water does, to open this up and see if I can get more out of it. It's Rabbit Hole, guys. So this is the Cave Hill. The Rabbit Hole Cave Hill four-grain bourbon. Uh, you're going to look for it at your local uh, cigar lounge or, or bar, and you're going to try one. And you're going to do it neat rock side or big rock side. You tell us what you think. Oh, worth trying? 150%. People doing interesting things. You gotta love it. This is Eat Drink Smoke. Follow Eat Drink Smoke on social media, on Twitter at Go Eat Drink Smoke, on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Eat Drink Smoke, and Instagram at Eat Drink Smoke Podcast. Everything is getting back to normal, and I know this because Costco is bringing back samples. Everything's gonna be okay. Just remain calm. We are back to regular life. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. They're bringing back the sampling stations to about a fifth of their location. So 170, no, maybe a fourth. 170 of the 550 locations. It's happening. happening, And then they're going to bring back at Sam's Club sampling at all 600 locations and finally i can taste the popcorn before i buy it right i call this my weekend lunch special i have said for forever that if target on friday nights would do wine sampling it's the only place couples would go married couples would be at target no kids allowed uh, wait no kids over the age of two allowed <laughs> parents would show up like it was there you know what no kids allowed forget it of course they'd show up they'd be nuts They'd be overjoyed. It would be a party and a half, and they would be buying everything. I bought seven TVs. <laughs> I couldn't help it. The box wine was amazing. Oh, wow. You, you shop at Target. You're fancy. Well, for some people, it's still called Target. Oh, I see. You know? Yeah, I hear you. I have a, I'm a Costco guy. I'm not a Sam's Club guy. I am, too. And where, when I know things will be completely back to normal is when I can walk up to the Costco uh, snack bar and get a hot dog and then go to the onion gun. You know the onion gun, right? I know the onion gun. <laughs> now, what makes no sense about this, everybody, is that Fingers Malloy, he does not like onions on his fast food. If he's at a McDonald's, he doesn't get onions. But if he's at Costco, he's all about the onion gun. He literally puts his mouth underneath it oh, like I, it's a keg stand. I love onions. I just don't like... A certain onion on a McDonald's burger, the, the cheeseburgers with those like dehydrated onions or whatever those things are that they, they just add water and you got these little tiny onion niblets or whatever they are. I, I don't know what they are, uh, the very finely diced onions. I don't like those, but the, the Costco onion gun, I can make a weekend out of that. You know, now that we're on the subject, I think this is a great time to ask the question, what did Fingers Malloy eat? It's the game sweeping the nation, everybody. What did Fingers Malloy eat? And when you hear it, you'll ask what I ask. How are you still alive? Fingers Malloy, what did you eat today? Uh, I find this incredibly entertaining just to see the look on your face, and it's unfortunate that we don't do video for this. Uh, well, bef <laughs> before, before I had dinner this evening, uh, I had lunch, and lunch was uh, a vending machine. I got uh, oh, God. a snack bag of Tostitos chips with uh, the little cheese cup, the peel back the, My arteries are already hardening. The foil, and you dip the, the chips in that oh, incredible cheese-like food. And then <laughs> I, I chased it uh, with a fun bag of uh, peanut M&Ms. That was, that was lunch. Lunch was chips with processed cheese food-like thing Yep. and peanut M&Ms. Right. And then on the way over here... I stopped at uh, McDonald's, and I got a McChicken sandwich, a double cheeseburger with no onions, 
and a, a small fry and a one of those uh, McFlurries. They've got a caramel brownie McFlurry. That's fantastic. It's a festival okay. flavor. Okay, everybody, say it with me. How are you still alive? I did two burpees this morning and a squat thrust. I'm in tip-top physical condition. In a row? <laughs> yes. I had to pace myself, <laughs> but I didn't stop. Oh, my God. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how. It was, it was a McChicken sandwich. Mm-hmm. It was a double cheeseburger. No onions. It was fries. Yes. And a McFlurry. And, and <laughs> a caramel brownie McFlurry. I, so real ice cream today and real cheese. I, a diet. I, I, I am I'm in awe. I'm disgusted and jealous <laughs> all at the same time. All at the same time. The thing that I will look forward to them bringing back at Costco is the churro. Kids are crazy about the churro. I have a bite. I have a bite of the churro. Now, the hot dog, oh, I, I could do a couple of those. No Wait, I don't eat with the bread, though. How do you only have one bite of a churro? And it's a small bite at that. I just have a little bite. Just a a dainty something. bite? I, I, I have a dainty, a petite. My, it's waffle thin. That's it. <laughs> That's what I do. Just, yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm participating. You I'm are, normal. You are one of the most disciplined eaters I have ever met in my life. If, how if you how am it, I this size? It's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And don't. Don't send me your weight loss tips, everybody, because honestly, I'm going to run my head through a wall. And he's got me. Right. <laughs> I, I have fingers to, to, to motivate me. I, I, here's, I see, you're the problem. You're the reason I don't have any. I hear that I, a lot. I, I, you're not motivating. There's no reason you should exist. <laughs> you can't eat that and then walk in here and be like, I'm feeling good. I'm assuming that's a song yes. that plays. My, my blood type is Shamrock Shake. Oh, now Shamrock Shake. See, but that's like once a year, and I can't do the whole one. I have like four sips. I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. Four sips. I feel so bad for you. It's, it's, just, it's just a miserable, miserable experience sometimes. But I, if I eat that stuff, well, then it's worse. Then it's worse. It's not worth it then. Uh, I, I'm, the problem is you eat it, and you're still alive. What, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Dang it. Uh, this list came out. As you know, we love a good list. These are the eight unexpected burger toppings you're going to want to try this summer. This came out from Men's Health. Now, this list is not a bad list. You're already doing some of these things. We're going to go through the first four. Coleslaw. Yup. Coleslaw on a turkey sandwich. Coleslaw on a roast beef sandwich. Coleslaw on a burger. Coleslaw anytime, day or night. Coleslaw on a pulled pork sandwich. Right. It's fantastic. Absolutely, and so you should slice peppers only if they're only if they're sautéed, like peppers and onions. Yep, totally right? agree with you on uh, that. It has to be guacamole. Eh. Oh yes, oh yes. But I would rather do avocado straight than do guacamole. I want the guacamole dip uh, on on the side. Sauerkraut. Now that's an interesting one. You're talking about basically a way to play in the cabbage world. Um, I like sauerkraut. It, to make it right, I mean, there's, there's a, there, I think there's a fair amount of sugar in there. Um, it's, uh, I, I think you got to be a certain type of person to make the sauerkraut happen. Now, this, this is, but this is a good list. If you haven't tried it, you should do it, and you got to get your burgers from Omaha Steaks. Listen to how this is going to work. OmahaSteaks.com. Use Tony. Use, uh, well, yes, use me. <laughs> That's the keyword. Put it right there in the search bar, and you're going to get 50 not was it was is, wait wait do I do I have this right? Fifty nine percent off, fifty nine percent. Yeah, I got it right. Fifty nine percent off, and you're gonna get four free New York Strip burgers. That's what you're going to get with the Get Out and Grill assortment: the butcher's cut strips, the boneless chicken breast, the Omaha steak burgers. That's right, steak burgers and the New York Strip burgers with the jumbo franks. Use my code Tony. It's so easy to do. You go to omahasteaks.com and you use keyword Tony. That's all you have to do. omahasteaks.com and use keyword Tony. That is it. omahasteaks.com keyword Tony. This right here is Eat, Drink, Smoke.
eat, drink, smoke. It is your cigar, bourbon, foodie, radio extravaganza. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. And make sure you go to eatdrinksmokeshow.com, get the latest reviews, see the latest articles, the cool grilling ideas, and of course, the podcast. You can get that at Apple Music. You can get that at Amazon, or Apple Podcasts, I should say, Amazon Music, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify. It's everywhere and it is free. You're welcome, America. We do it for you. The Rabbit Hole Cave Hill, that is what we are drinking. This 95 proof bourbon, really interesting mash bill uh, with the malted barley and the honey malted barley, aged only three years. Thought it might be a little. Uh, I'm going to get yelled at for saying green. But, you know, it's a little on the younger side for, for some people, and, and maybe it would, it would come across that way. You didn't say harsh. It's certainly not harsh. This is actually a really lovely bourbon. Uh, Josh is taking care of us today. He talked about the fact this is a great entree, right? It's a great way to get into bourbon from Rabbit Hole, rabbitholedistillery.com. I added an ice chip to it. I haven't had a sip since. Oh, We've I, been so busy. You, you're, are you done? Uh, no, no, I'm not done. I added an ice chip, and again, it really brought out the citrus for me in it and the vanilla, uh, but... I, I'm very happy with it. And again, I, I don't know if it's in my liquor cabinet, but it is definitely something that I think if you find it at your favorite bourbon bar, you need to give it a try. It is way better on the chip than it was meat. Uh, it has brought out the oak, I think, in a really nice way. Yeah, man. Look, I, I'm still there. It's, 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 a, it's a, a little bit different. Not that classic kind of, of bourbon, even though I am talking about the oak. Uh, that 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 orange is is there. Uh, that nose that has that that sweet corn on it. There's a touch of cinnamon happening. There's a lot of good here. I want you to try it at, at your favorite bar first. Your favorite cigar lounge first. You're gonna find it goes with a lot of cigars. You're gonna, you're gonna have a, a good time with this. Well, that's what I was just about to say with this uh, diamond crown black cigar that we're having. The black diamond. Oh, the black diamond. Excuse me. Uh, diamond crown black diamond. Yeah. You got it right. Okay. Uh, it has really brought back the pepper for me, this pairing on the cigar. I, I swear to you, that is fascinating. That is fascinating because that is not what, 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 what I'm getting. Don't get me wrong. Because of the bourbon, the, the, the inhale, right? the inhale, bringing it into the, in, in, to, to toast the palate, is a little more intensity on, on the tongue. But I'm not, I'm not getting pepper. It's not no, where I live. It's, it's pepper and wood for me. And it, it's really brought back the pepper. It's, it's an interesting pairing. I'll uh, tell you what, though. I think the cigar is fantastic. Yes. I think the cigar has a lot to offer, and I'm more and more convinced this is a sit-alone cigar. This is a sit-alone cigar, and, 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 and take a moment to take a breath and take a beat in, in your life. The, the, the Black Diamond from Diamond Crown. There's going to be a couple of these in my humidor. Not a box, just a couple. It's time, Fingers Malloy, for News of the Week. Well, Tony, you know how much we love social media. What? We talk about how it's a great environment to be a part of and how you connect with people and everyone is so pleasant. What? <laughs> is that? That's not a thing? Is that, is that true? Did, did, we, did we fall through a wormhole <laughs> into an alternate dimension? 2011, you mean? <laughs> oh, 2011 was a good time. Yes. 2011 social media was fun. You could actually coordinate with your friends on where to meet for a drink. Those were the days. Those were the days. Well, Twitter... One of the places that we have complained about from time to time. Uh, they're stepping up and they're, they're launching its first ever subscription service. Now, this is interesting. It's, it's, it's launching right now in Canada and Australia. It's, it's only going to be a few bucks a month. And one of the features that you will get if you take part in this subscription service, they have uh, it set up where you'll have the ability to have 30 seconds after you send a tweet to be able to cancel it. Say, I don't know about you, but if you're in a hurry, say your dandruff is raised a little bit. You, 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 you get a little upset. You get a little right. hot under the collar, and you tweet something, and then you realize, oh, my goodness, uh, three typos. <laughs> or, oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that. You would have 30 seconds to take that tweet back. So that's one. I, people who are big Twitter folk, Right, they call users. Them, they call themselves Twitter folk. Do they call themselves the folk? Yes. Oh, what do you know about that? Uh, we're actually going to have a Twitter folk convention, I think. At we the, are not. <laughs> we're not at the airport Hilton in Denver. Uh, no, but uh, people have been screaming for years about an edit button right. on Twitter, and Twitter is refu- we're not going to do that, we're not going to do that. Well, now you're kind I mean, 30-second delay, uh, 
but you have to pay for it. There are going to be other things, too, that they're going to offer in the subscription Will service. Will you pay the between three fifty and four fifty a month for the service? They think they can get 300 million users and start doubling their revenue to $7.5 billion by the end of 2023. It's interesting. I, I wouldn't because I've kind of walked away a little bit from Twitter. But the other things, I look at this and I'm like, really do, are people really anxious to get access to color themes for their Twitter app? I Get what? Access to color themes for their Twitter app. People do like personalization. They, they, they do. And, and, and some people will pay just to show, hey, look how cool I am. I, I have a Twitter subscription. And you get dedicated customer support. So when, they, <laughs> so when they, they, they block your tweet, you have somebody to actually complain to. I, I, I'm asking who is the, the, the market here, right? Who, who is buying this? And I'm not so sure. If you told me that the subscription service allows me just to create groups uh, amongst, not lists, but groups amongst people and have basically sub-tweets, right? Or, or sub-Twitters sub where I'm just having a group of people. Maybe I'd be interested. Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not as of yet seeing it. I think that this is you know, a trial balloon because you, you have seen other uh, things that Twitter has launched that has kind of mimicked other services like uh, the Instagram stories. Now you've got the, the, the Twitter, uh, I think they're called Fleets. Uh, Fleets? Yes, they also, uh, you know, there's a, uh, an app called Clubhouse. Where you well, that's can a completely different app. Yeah, yeah. You, you can create audio rooms. You can do that now on Twitter. I think they're experimenting with different ways to bring in new users, but also there has been talk that Twitter has not been bringing in the revenue that it used to for a number of reasons, and one of it may be the, the toxic environment that we're seeing on Twitter. And it is. It's a toxic, toxic environment. The less I do with social, the better I feel. My, my brother dropped Facebook altogether. He, he's, he's thrilled. He's overjoyed when he thinks of the time that he wasted there. By the way, find us on Facebook, <laughs> facebook.com slash eat, drink, smoke. That's a great, great group of people. Fantastic Absolutely. group of people. Uh, but it's, it's true. You get, you get sucked down, and pardon the pun, with what we're drinking, the rabbit hole. And you end up in, in these conversations with people who are awful. It's one of the reasons I love cigars so much, because I end up in conversations with people who are people. Right. Normal, rational people who aren't interested in being crazy all the time. I think a lot of it has to do with the amount of anger, just in general in society, that I, I believe social media has brought a lot of that out. I mean, Twitter used to be so much fun because you could be, uh, you know, sitting in your basement and tweet a celebrity and they may respond to you and you may have an interaction with someone that was your favorite musician 15 years ago or a comedian uh, that you, you love. And it's turned into, you know, we don't talk about politics much on the show, but so much of it, I believe, is politically driven. People are just there. They want to throw their political views out there and get into uh, debates and arguments and I, it's, it's just turned very toxic in a lot of ways. People are so desperate to let you know their feelings, so desperate to tell you how wrong you are so they can feel good about themselves. Uh, and and it's, there, there was a thing on one of the, one of the cable news uh, outlets where they were doing an interview. I forget the subject right now. And a neighbor who disagreed with this woman being interviewed came out and gave the camera the finger from behind her. This woman's being interviewed, <laughs> and the neighbor comes out of her house to give the finger to the camera and to this woman, to, the, to her neighbor. Do you know the amount of time you have to invest in that? And does that happen 20 years ago? I don't feel like it. I, I'm sure it could, but I, I just feel like things are worse now. I, 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 I do believe they are worse now because people feel they, they've lost filter. They've lost the ability to control themselves. It's like when we talk about you know, fights on airplanes. Everyone thinks that they're the most important person. They don't feel the need to exist in, in a way that it, your disagreements are inconsequential to being rational. Rationality has gone out the window. And I think that's why bourbon has increased. This is Eat, Drink, Smoke. Did you know Audible isn't just for audiobooks? They have podcasts, too. And you guessed it. Eat, Drink, Smoke is now on Audible. Listen to us there. Eat, Drink, Smoke. Amazon is starting to creep me out even more than just the Echo, right? More than just Alexa. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say Alexa unless you're listening. 
on Alexa. That's just rude to do. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Right, they're getting ready for Prime Day, as we talked about. They've got deals that right now don't seem much like deals, but maybe they'll, they'll get there. They are launching a program called Sidewalk at Amazon. And what Sidewalk is going to do, it's a low-band network tapping into a customer's home Wi-Fi to connect the smart speakers, Ring Security Ring is now owned by Amazon, uh, and location tractor, trackers, other sensors. So it works by having users of these products share a bit of their bandwidth with other Amazon customers. And so what happens is, with everybody sharing a little bit of bandwidth, you can now work your devices from long range. Now, I don't know why you can't do that already, but they think it's going to allow users to, as, as the story is written from CBS News, locate lost keys or missing pets. You can fix devices remotely. You're letting other people onto your signals. I, how is this not just a recipe for complete and total disaster and people knowing your search history? Oh, listen. They assure you that it's safe, Tony, so you should be fine with that. According right. to this, there are multiple layers of encryption to protect people's privacy. Uh-huh. I'm sold. Because <laughs> nothing, nothing's ever been hacked. Colonial Pipeline or JBS Meat or, you know, any bank or... <laughs> this is... They hacked Equifax a couple years back. That's the credit rating people. It, 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 I, I can't. I can't bring myself... I can't bring myself to trust it. I can't bring myself to be a part of it. And and it's it's me. I'm the guy who covers up the camera on my on my laptop. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm the, I don't have it actually fell off. I got a new one. I I can't bring myself to 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 trust it. Can you? Uh no. But you're okay uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the Alexa in your home. I am, but I'm not okay with other people being able to tap into my network like that. I to me you, you just brought it up. Okay, granted you may not have a bunch of Russian hackers going after your home, but th- you cannot tell me that there aren't going to be ways to get around and, and hack into that. And that, to me, it just scares me. I, I, I do my best now. He- heck, keys right now, you don't even have to take them out of your pocket anymore for a lot of cars. You just keep it in your pocket, and then you go home and you put your key on, on the ring or the, the hook or whatever you got at the house. Losing keys, okay, losing your pet, I can understand... <laughs> I can understand the draw, but I, I just think it's it's too risky. That doesn't that doesn't sound good to me at all. I, I, I'm not in. I, I sometimes I think people do things because it is as, as we were talking about. It's a cool thing to do. It's like getting the Twitter subscription service. Does anybody ever ask? Do you really need this in in your life? Walmart, they're increasing hours. They're going to open at six a.m. and senior hours are going to continue. So this was COVID. How do we make people feel safe? We know. We will open an hour earlier for seniors so the place will be clean and they'll feel more comfortable about coming in. That's, that's as smart and as good of an idea as any other. If it gets you some, some, some loyalty and customers feel better about it, sure. Go right ahead. I, I think it, it's perfectly rational. Yeah, we're returning to normal again, and that's nice. I was up in Michigan a couple of weeks ago, and this was Michigan, Tony. I mean, the, the lockdowns in Michigan, the... Uh, all the, the things that buzz businesses had to do to, to run their business and the, the mask mandates and stuff. It was one of the more strict states in the union. I was walking through a Walmart two weeks ago without a mask. It felt weird. I felt like I walked into another dimension. It was like, oh, oh my goodness, I'm walking through Walmart without a mask on. And I, here's the one thing I've noticed, too. In situations like that, and I was at a casino uh, not of too long ago. Of course you were. Not too long ago in Michigan. I keep reaching for my mask even though I don't have one. It's just a, it's, it's a reflex now because we've been conditioned to, to wear these for so long and businesses have, have forced us to, well, businesses have had to make you do it. But I keep grabbing underneath my chin for my mask. I'm like, oh, I don't have it anymore. I got a haircut and I look amazing. Thank you. Thank you everybody for <laughs> noticing. I appreciate it. Bo Ricks does amazing things And nowadays. I was not wearing a mask. And there were some people in there wearing a mask, and there were people who cut the hair wearing, wearing a, a mask. And I'm like, am I supposed to be wearing a mask? No one said a word to me. No one said thing one to me. And the best is I was working with the people at the counter because I, 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 it turns out I, I made an appointment for the wrong day because I'm a fool, what, whatever. They had the masks underneath their mouths. They had the masks on. 
but they were under their mouths. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. No one said word one to me. It is weird. I just got a haircut a couple of weeks ago, and I had to have my mask on the entire time. And this was a place that they would usually do beard a beard trim. And she said to me, I, we can't do that here. We what? Just, we, we can't do the beard trim corporate policy in this state uh, because of, of, of the masks were still, you know, I couldn't even take my mask. She had to take my mask kind of off of one ear to get to the sideburns. So not only did I not wear a mask, I openly coughed without covering my mouth. Did people freak? No, I didn't cough at all. I was just saying it for effect. <laughs> they really? How do you get a haircut with a mask on? It, it's not easy, but they're used to it by now. And you're getting a, you're getting a mohawk. Yeah. If you've never seen Fingers Malloy, 6'3", Harley gear, full mohawk. He's the kind of guy you totally want to bring home to mom. <laughs> He's the dream. Yeah, no, it was it was it was strange because it was the first time that I've actually had that happen where I couldn't even remove the mask. She kind of like took off one ear That's gently weird. and then gave me the clip. I bring up Walmart because I want to get back to the idea of creepy. It got announced that Walmart is going to give half of its US employees, almost half, free Samsung phones. By the end of the year, more than 740,000 workers are going to get the Samsung Galaxy X Cover Pro smartphone. They're going to get a case, and they're going to get a protection plan. The reason is so they can use an app the company developed to manage shifts, clock in, and stay in, quote-unquote, wait for it. Oh, please, if you're driving, hands on 10 and 2. If you're sitting at home, make sure you're not around other people. They want to be able to stay in constant communication creepy super creepy or windowless van creepy windowless van creepy so creepy oh because you eased into it at yeah. first you're like oh yeah cool okay i can uh, you know check my hours i can you know check my vacation i saw the headline and i thought they were doing it as a way to retain and bring in employees free phone there have been places that have been doing things like this because they can't find employees constant communication Oh, oh, whether you want it or not, whether you know it or not, Walmart knows if you've been sleeping. They know if you're awake. See, and to me, oh, and I'm not talking about when you get into upper management at Walmart, but retail to me is one of those jobs. And I worked retail many moons ago where it's the type of job where once you clocked out, you felt like, OK, I'm done with I don't have to think about work. I don't have to think about it. But now with your new Walmart smartphone, as they describe it, the app is called Me at Walmart. You can check schedules. You can ask for changes or time off. Uh, voice activated assistant that will help you locate products and will help workers instantly connect with one another. Using the phones is not mandatory. Okay. Which is, of course, everything. You can make the choice to use the phone. So that's what my question was going to be. Uh, you know, can management... When, when, you know, you got, where's my iPhone? Right. Could they say, uh, oh, gee, uh, Jim called in sick today. <laughs> oh, why is he why is he in Vegas? Can they monitor search history? Oh. There's a lot here. There, this is one of those things where may, maybe, maybe you don't need that. Maybe that isn't the thing you need. And, and by the way, I don't want to, you know, uh, imply a nefarious intent on the Walmart. I'm just saying windowless van creepy. The Rabbit Hole Cave Hill bourbon. Yeah, you got to try it. You got to try it and see if this is for you. The Black Diamond from Diamond Crown, finally into that final third. It has gotten bigger. The, the, the pepper not there for me, fingers, but great flavor coming out of this cigar. Get one. Take it home. Back deck, back porch, alone time. Give it a try. EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. This is Eat Drink Smoke.